Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Amber Rockbridge, not Julia Roberts. Ha <laughs> It's hard to be here, and I know everyone's frustrated and try to lighten the mood, but there you go. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we're here tonight, and, and everybody who's already spoke is clearly to begin a fact-finding mission. I mean, over the course of months, I've clearly had numerous people from the community coming to me who have great concerns. I, like you, have, you're living it, I'm not, but clearly seen um, some of the photos that are really quite disturbing. Mm -hmm. and so I'd like to ask, just by a show of hands, for those of you in the room, obviously you all have concern with water. Um, is, is it something that has been shown to you or is coming out of your tap or in your tub or in your toilet that's brown or yellow, off-colored, smelly, what appears to be smelly? Could I see a show of hands? So all of you. Okay. Well, that certainly helps. You know, I mean, we know that um, it's not been spotty, but there's some people that have been getting black water. There's some people, how many in this room have had black water? So, good portion of you. Um, the rest of you, are you seeing, is, is it, are you getting brown, discolored, yellow, yes? All like smelly, smelly, smelly water. Okay. <laughs> this, and what I want you to know, uh, that's most important, that makes the difference, that turns the dial, is not me, it's every one of you. You are the persons living in these communities that are being delivered undrinkable, we deem certainly not safe, water, and you have great concerns. It will be your voice, your collective voice, coming to meetings like this, we want the meetings to continue to grow, contacting us, making those phone calls, and standing up and saying, our water is filthy, it's disgusting, it stinks, it smells, we need help. This has been going on for some time, and it's gone on long enough. So tonight is a fact-finding mission. I want you to know that you can call or email me at any single time, but as we get the community together, as we hear from more of you, as we begin working through this, we will find a whole lot of answers. But the one thing that's most important to me tonight that I want you to know when you go home, you're gonna move the dial. Your voices, your neighborhoods, your community, and getting a hold of your officials Contacting your municipality, not one, not ten of you, a hundred, a thousand of you. Do it. That's what makes the difference. I've been doing this for 22 years. And I can assure you, when you start using your voices, when you stand up collectively, get your information together, and start making those calls, start banding together, and start insisting that the water that is provided to you by this municipality is clean, and you have every single assurance that it is safe for you and your children. I will be here to support you. Bob is here to do a lot of the chemistry work. We'll be down on the ground. Uh, one thing that we have discussed is starting to test at the top. There's a lot of unanswered questions. And my concern tonight and why I'm here tonight is to hear your concerns, to begin to answer your questions so that we can begin to find ways to have a solution sooner than later for you because it's not acceptable. Certainly not the photos I've seen, the complaints I've heard, the concerns of the citizen, that this has gone on this long and we do not have this problem resolved immediately. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk all night either. I want to hear from every single one of you what questions you have, what concerns you have, how we can begin to answer it, how we can begin to mobilize you, and how we can begin to find a solution to your problem. So, Bob usually always has something to say. <laughs> what I'd like to do is tell you what's going on. Um, give you some, some sort of an explanation as to what's causing this, um, the, the uh, history of what's, what's going on, and then Aaron and I will open up <coughs> questions for you, uh, because I'm sure you're gonna have a lot. And the easiest way to just explain this to you is to start from the beginning and kind of give you a little bit of a better understanding where your water comes from and how the water utility can stand in front of you and tell you this drinking water is safe. Um, for those of you that attended their meeting, I mean, they stood there with a straight face and said, 
this drinking water is safe. It meets or exceeds all federal and state Safe Drinking Water Act requirements. When a water utility professional starts his conversation by telling you his water meets or exceeds all federal and state Safe Drinking Water Act requirements, he's hiding something. <coughs> you do not begin with that as an explanation. The area in the South Bay here, the Gardena, Lawndale, Hawthorne area, <clears throat> is run by an investor-owned utility called the State Water Company. The parent company, American States, is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and they pay dividends. Unlike the city of Torrance to the south, where it's a city or a municipal drinking water system, the public works director over there, he's in charge of the potholes, he's in charge of the parks, he's in charge of the streets, the traffic signals, might even be in charge of the dog catcher, and he's got the water and sewer department as well. So it's not all he does. An investor-owned utility, that's all they do. And frankly, because of that, they owe you much better service. The utility gets its water from the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. And they get it through their, their middleman, um, West, or, excuse me, West Basin Municipal Water District. West Basin Municipal Water District has a board member that's representing you at that water district. Those five members elect one of their members to represent them at Metropolitan Water District in downtown Los Angeles. And they import water to you from the California State Water Project in the Sacramento Delta and the Colorado River out of Lake Havasu. Okay, and that water comes in, Lake Havasu comes to Laverne, California, and the State Water Project water comes up to Granada Hills, comes up over the grapevine and comes to Granada Hills. Historically, this area received predominantly surface water from the State Water Project out of the Sacramento Delta because you're over on this side of the distribution system. And it was supplemented by groundwater wells here in the area from the West Basin Aquifer that's below us here. And Golden State Water Company has water rights to that aquifer. They blend that water with the Metropolitan Water District water in various concentrations. Then in about 2000, the end of the 90s, 2000, the city of Los Angeles lost most of its water supply from the Owens Valley. There was the Owens Valley Dry Lake lawsuit, all those litigations that took place against the city of Los Angeles for importing all that water from Owens Valley, if you paid attention to that at all. So when Los Angeles lost its access to that water supply, they began taking the state water project water that was going to the Gardena, or to the Granada Hills treatment plant. The city of Los Angeles' treatment plant is right next to Metropolitan Water District's surface water treatment plant, in right there at the, where the five goes up the grapevine. So <clears throat> when they lost that, more Colorado River water came to this area, okay, to West Basin. So the Colorado River water is low in organics, but high in salts, total salt solids. The Sacramento Delta is low in salts and total salt solids, but high in organics. Organics are decaying grasses, leaves, mosses, things like that. So you have that water quality coming into the Gardena area. You have the Colorado River water coming into the Gardena area, and then you have the groundwater coming into the Gardena area. Now, because of the organics in the water coming from the State Water Project, several years ago, several decades ago, Metropolitan Water District began a process of called chloramination. Chlorine mixed with ammonia to sequester the chlorine's reaction with organics that will form what they call disinfection byproducts. Some of you might have looked on your consumer confidence reports. How many people actually look at their consumer confidence reports that come out every year? They actually have all the water chemistry on them. They're very difficult to read, but they do send them out. On there are what they call trihalomethanes and halicidic acids, and those are regulated disinfection byproducts. And they don't want to form those, so they feed ammonia to the water, pure nitrogen ammonia, and it binds with the chlorine molecule to not cause those reactions to continue to occur, <coughs> not forming disinfection byproducts. Then they, they mix that water with plain chlorine in the groundwater. 
So your chlorine is bringing up water that is naturally high in iron, red and brown, and manganese, black. <coughs> okay? And what happens is, is when you chlorinate water that has high levels of dissolved iron and manganese, meaning you don't see it in the water, but you hit it with chlorine, you ever hit like a, a porcelain tub with like a, a bleach cleaner and it kind of makes a red stain? That's precipitation of the metals. They fall out of solution in the water and precipitate in, into, the, into the, the solid form that you can see, smell, and taste. And so what happens is, is they chlorinate the wells only. They don't chloraminate the wells. And then the water precipitates out the metals, which go into the plumbing, the distribution system here in town. And then that water mixes with the predominantly imported Colorado River water. When those two waters meet, it's like oil and vinegar, oil and water. They just, they don't like each other. They don't blend together well. And what happens is, is the chlorine says, hey, there's some extra ammonia in this water. And the chlorine that precipitated all those metals jumps on to the chloramination, which creates a weaker but more persistent disinfectant. And so what happens is then the system builds up all this precipitated iron and manganese. Now the bad part about a distribution system that is not maintained properly, where they don't maintain it, they don't, they don't take care of flushing it out, they don't add the right chemicals to make it work properly, and they blend these three very aggressive waters that don't like each other together without a true management plan, the chemicals build up. Iron and manganese in a distribution system pipe are like candy to bacteria. And so there's what they call iron and manganese bacteria, or biofilms that'll start to grow in the pipes, okay? Now, the only thing that bacteria like better than iron and manganese is nitrogen, or ammonia. And so as the chlorine becomes consumed in the disinfection process in the distribution system that's so poorly maintained, it has a huge chlorine demand, and the chlorine's trying to kill the biofilm, it breaks free from the ammonia, and that's like candy to these guys. And so you have these huge biological reactions taking place in your plumbing that cause both scaling and corrosion and iron and manganese precipitation and accumulation, and they've just made the problem worse, continually making it worse. And what you were first experiencing is you were experiencing these hot spots around town. Somebody would call up and say, hey, my water's real black and it smells bad, and they'd go flush over there. Or, hey, my water smells bad, and they'd go flush over there. And they were just spot cleaning the system, which in fact made it worse. If one of you on that side of town complained and they came out and flushed it, you were responsible for destroying the, the plumbing and the laundry of everybody else in your neighborhood because as they flushed your water out, they were just causing the other water to become more contaminated. So they've gotten really sophisticated, and I don't know where this came from because it's actually a hundred year old process. They're doing directional flushing. Sounds really sophisticated. And they, they're, they're putting arrows in the street and they're looking real scientific. It means they're flushing water downhill. It's not, it's not a scientific process at all. It's the appropriate process. But flushing alone is, as somebody said earlier, I think it was Helen, is a temporary fix. Until they get after this water chemistry and they understand it, then they're going to continue to have the problems. Now, I cannot say this enough tonight. The water is not safe to drink when you can see these chemicals in it, period. And I am very concerned of what you can't see, those biofilm and those scale, those scale that are, are, are actually growing because of the lack of maintenance of this system. It, it's very, very frustrating um, as a water professional to hear my peers and colleagues stand before you and say, the water is safe to drink because it meets all regulations. Not very many people in this room realize, but the city of Torrance received a Division of Drinking Water citation. And I'm not calling out Torrance, and I don't mean to embarrass them. But in November 2014, 
not that long ago, same time you were experiencing this problem, Torrance was cited for a manganese violation at one of their wells. Nobody said anything, it wasn't even discussed. I found it for another reason. But this is manganese, and this is what the Division of Drinking Water told Torrance they were in violation for. Well, how the, the citation was written was they were in violation for producing it at the source. So your water, when your community water system tells you your water is safe to drink, it's tested in Laverne, and it's tested in Granada Hills, and it's tested at the well. It's not tested in that gigantic bioreactor that they've created and failed to maintain. It is not tested. Manganese, they'll tell you, is a secondary drinking water standard that is only for aesthetics. I will tell you, drinking this quantity, you, things are measured in parts per million and parts per billion. This is parts per hundred. I mean, this is ridiculous. People are like, oh, will you take a test of that? I don't have to. This could cause serious illness immediately. Okay, it's, it's to be able to say strychnine, Everybody knows you know what strychnine is. It's a poison. I could put half strychnine in a bottle of water and tell you that water meets all federal and state safe drinking water standards. Do you know why? Strychnine is not a regulated contaminant in drinking water. So if it's not on the list, it's perfectly okay. I will tell you, manganese can cause a number of illnesses and immediate distress if consumed at this level. So you, this water is not safe to drink. They're gonna tell you, and you're gonna hear this, and the politicians, I apologize, are gonna hear this, that the United States infrastructure is in great disrepair, and that is a true statement. We are trillions of dollars behind as a nation in repairing our water systems, and our sewage collection systems, and our bridges and our roads. Those are all true things. Cities that had water utilities for the last 50 years <coughs> were putting money away for you know, depreciation, it's called. What's your depreciation component? Well, if you have a $50 million water system, you put $5 million away every year. At the end of 10 years, you got $50 million to replace what was used. Used depreciation, you depreciate cars, you depreciate equipment. Okay, that's a process. Governments do it as well, and they do that. Unfortunately, city councils and mayors, they don't like to pass rate increases, okay? So they're not real popular to pass a water rate increase. And worse yet, back in the day, before there was some legislation changes here in the state of California, mayors used to have, have projects. Hey, I'll look really good if I put in that new swimming pool. My police department needs a raise. How about those softball fields or that soccer field? And the money in water utilities across the country was taken by elected officials. Rather than to replace the pipes or the infrastructure, that all is a, is a plausible argument. We all have heard it and we all understand it and we all know it. But Golden State Water Company, they take depreciation too. But they don't take depreciation with the city finance director. They prepare taxes. And they have tax attorneys and tax accountants. And what do they do? They take depreciation and they report it to the IRS. And then that money goes somewhere and they pay their shareholders on Wall Street a dividend. So have they been lying to you, the people of Lawndale, Hawthorne, Gardena, or the IRS? I say let them pick their poison. You know, I don't know whether you or the IRS is going to be worse, but where's the money? Why is a regulated utility that has been depreciating its asset, why are they back in Washington, D.C., standing in line with the community water systems and the mutual water companies when they're paying a shareholder dividend? You know, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> are you getting it? <laughs> you know, as far as I'm concerned, a, a publicly regulated utility that is providing its community with water that looks like this and their shareholders a dividend, that should be against the law.
because a mayor will answer to you at the ballot box. The president of Golden State Water Company making a $1.6 million salary, he'll listen to a shareholder that ain't getting a dividend. And that's how you get to those folks. But until it's illegal to provide you water like that and continue to pay dividends, we're gonna have a problem. What we anticipate doing is moving forward with you two ways. I'm gonna just announce it, address it, and then see where you guys wanna go as a community and then answer your questions. We would like to work with the community, work with the council and the leadership in this, in this water system, and it involves three cities, Congress, local elected officials that can help us with the Division of Drinking Water in Sacramento. But if the city of Torrance can receive a citation for manganese at their water supply source, why can't Golden State start receiving citations for exactly these types of activities that they're doing here? So we want to see an immediate fix from the Division of Drinking Water. We want to see a citation in place and a compliance schedule issued that says this, car, this, this water system shall comply with these milestones to make this problem stop. That's how we're gonna get it fixed on a go forward basis. Now you've all suffered damages that you've seen. I mean, I, I was talking to people that their landlords are coming out to their apartment buildings and saying, why has the water gone up double? Well, because when you get water like this in your bath, you let it run for a long time before you fill it. Or when you're gonna go get a pitcher of water, you let it run for a long time. When you flush the toilet and it's black and you got guests coming over, you keep flushing it until you get some clean water. You're using a lot of water, okay? How can we say that you all are wasting this water? And Golden State Water Company has some of the highest rates in this state. How can we be allowing you to clean their system on your dime? That's number one. And if that got you upset, that water that's going down those gutters that I've seen people picking up and throwing on their bushes, thank goodness somebody's doing that. I got news for you. You're paying for that too. They will take every drop of water that they have purchased and that they have produced, and they will divide it back into the number, and they'll go up to the Public Utilities Commission, and every drop they have flushed down the street will be paid for by you. Okay? So that's the other problem we've got here. How many people have a water filter in their clothes washing machine? In their dishwasher? Behind their refrigerator? In their coffee pot? I mean, there are filters where you don't know you have filters. Okay? There are aerators. Anybody change a water heater lately? Your water heater is full of that. You put water heat to that, you don't want to know the bacteria that like candy, nitrogen, and warm water. It gets worse when the temperature goes up. And when you're cooking it in that type of sludge that's building up in the bottom of your water heater, it's even more of a problem. So those are the damages. How many people here have ruined a load of laundry? Okay. So these are things that you are most definitely entitled to be reimbursed for. And what we want to make sure is that the process is clean and the process is pure and everybody is treated fairly and equally and that they are not allowed to go to the Public Utilities Commission and claim for rate return for paying for your laundry. Because that's exactly what they would do if we weren't watching. Thank you very, very much. Did I tell you Bob could talk? <laughs> Bob is awesome. He's the best investigator we have. He truly cares. He's a water master. He's terrific. He's informative. So Bob, I never say thank you to him too often. But hey, Bob! Bob! Thank you. You did a great job. I'm really glad you came. And, uh, again, I'm sorry it's on um, difficult circumstances, but uh, I'm going to end tonight with what I began. You can turn the dial. Part of our job is to support you, provide you education, awareness, information. You can begin to make better choices, different choices, one that will protect you and your family, 
I am all in favor of you lighten the phones up at your water district, lighten the phones up at your politicians, holding their feet to the fire. I have seen across this country, and you are not alone. We have a crisis, a situation like we see tonight, where you are now being delivered, really, third world water is happening across this country. Where a change begins is with you. We've seen it happen in other states where people rally, they push, we have grand jury indictments, and guess what's happening? CEOs of these companies are going to jail. And it's about time, and it will happen with your help. So it's not an easy task, it won't be overnight, but it can be done. And I wanna thank you for coming out and speaking out and don't ever be afraid to use your voice. I see this happening way too often. We think because we're not the politician, we're not the doctor, we're not the scientist, we're not the attorney, therefore our voice doesn't matter. That is absolutely not true. You will turn the dial, you will do it here. And I thank you for coming and for everybody's time tonight. And we'll be back, we'll have more meetings and um, First thing tomorrow, light those phones up. Start making those phone calls. Put some people's feet to the fire.